I'm um, pleased to say I'm joined by the PDC Tournament Director, Graham Fairhurst. Thanks very much for the time again, Graham. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Alex. Uh, nice to be back on. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it seems five listeners we chatted, but I'm sure it's quite a few months ago. A lot of things have happened since then, but yeah, pleased to be back, mate. Yes, you're right. We last had you on in July, just before the Summer Series and the Tour resuming after the break 128 players five days of action how did that week go the first week back with pdc darts yes it went probably better than we expected um you know the players adapted very well um you know having to isolate for the test results we had our eyes open on how quick test results can't come back and can't come back so i think as your viewers probably know that they were watching it and looking through dars connect we did delay the start so we learned the lesson from that straight away to uh you know to be adaptable and, and flexible and, and that sort of thing but yeah it went it went really well i believe until the first dart was about to be thrown on the stream and then the lights went out <laughs> But um, you know, yeah. Overall, you know, the the, the staff were great. The, the venue was great. The testing procedure was was great. The testing company was great, and the players, you know, all 128 of them adapted really well. Uh, from I say, from getting there to be isolated to to the plane, uh, and I think you know the plane standard for people being away that long uh, over the five days was really good as well. Yeah, and uh, a few weeks later, we then had the world match play behind closed doors with no fans. We used to obviously it being at Blackpool. Uh, how strange was it seeing the tournament play out away from the famous Winter Gardens? Yeah, it was very strange. You know, obviously the, all the years we've been there, uh, you know, again, staff and players say it's probably their favourite tournament uh, of the calendar, and it was yeah, it was it was very strange. But again, everybody adapted. You know, jumping forward a few months, somebody mentioned to me just recently that Alexandra Palace that felt like the World Championships. It was in its right place. It was at the right time of the year. Whereas, you know, the, the Grand Prix, the match play, uh, the Grand Slam, yes, they carried the same titles and the same prestige, but didn't quite feel the same, not being in the, in the like, original or, um, you know, normal venues. So, um, yeah, that, that part of it was strange. I think, again, after the first couple of games the, the the players you know adapted to the, uh, the the false crowd noise and um the surroundings and again I'm, i believe you know viewing figures wise and you know the the comments we have from the viewers which again come across all right and was it uh, very enjoyable during this pandemic the guys at the pdc you've had to keep a close eye on the changing rules and regulations out there how hard has it been organizing events since you've come back um i remember when we first had you on just before the summer series, you said that was logistically the hardest event that you've had to put on as tournament director. From from that side of it, yes, it was um, until probably the, uh, until probably July, and then I found it harder to try and organise thirty two COVID tests um, than I did uh, organise one hundred and twenty eight of them. <laughs> um, you know, because obviously not everybody's playing at the same time on the TV events. So again, we had to be adaptable on that for for when people come in. But at the same time, you know, we are governed by you know, the guidelines we've got to follow and when the testing company can be there. So that was a little bit of a challenge as well. But we're getting used to it now. Uh, the players are used to it. Um, we would obviously love to not do it, but it's one of the things we've got to to put the events on. So, you know, the quicker, the better we get it back to normality and then everybody can just come and go as they want. But until that time, uh, you know, we will continue doing what we're doing. Well, fortunately, there's been very few players or officials that have tested positive for the virus when the events have gone on and you've been doing the testing beforehand. I think we had two at the World Grand Prix. There was one by in the World Championship. Given you've got all the players coming from around the world, did you expect more positive cases and, and more juggling things around than you have, have had to do? Um, probably, yes, it would be the right answer to that. You know, the, when you see the cases per day in the country and you know the different areas and they have players traveling from europe and like you say from all all around the world um we were expected a lot more yeah um we have had things in place where you know if we do get positive tests we can get players in but as you've seen at the worlds that doesn't always uh, work because then the reserves can be tested positive as well so that's a challenge and what we don't you know the floor events are a bit different where we can you know it's not as bad having a buy in the floor events but it, it doesn't certainly look good on tv but, but you know at times it just it can't be helped um and again you know everybody accepts that that's the way it is at the moment in the in the current situation 
Well, let's look ahead then to 2021. We've got some listener questions coming up as well, but a lot of questions about Q School, which is coming up two weeks on Monday. Firstly, the change in the format, we've got the two stages. Was this a change purely down to the pandemic or with the growing number of entries that we've had in recent years? Is this something that the PDC have considered doing anyway? Yeah, we've, we've looked at different options for, for the last couple of years regarding you know the, the, the size of the of the entry. Uh, so coupled with the, the pandemic, um, the, the changes were made this year and we had nothing but good feedback from that. And it also helps the, the guys who, you know, unfortunately lost it to a card this year. That gives them a little bit of a, not a seed, but it gives them, you know, the, the, the straightforward route into stage two, which is a little bit of a reward for having, if you can call it a reward, for having uh, to a card last year. As you know, you know, yourself watching Q School over the years and the results coming in, it's a tough field. Um, so that was just, a, you know, a little bit of, I like say, for the want of a better word, a reward to them. But yeah, a lot of it, you know, again, was down to the pandemic. To, to, to the guidelines again to, to get the event on, we've got to you know keep numbers um, low. We're constant contact with Milton Keynes local council officials, the venue, and I think overall, you know, this the two stages helps obviously keep the numbers down and you know fingers crossed it'll work really well and you know you never know maybe something that we use going forward in normal circumstances as well 10 years ago last week that we had the first ever q school in 2011 a few years ago you introduced the european q school but this year's must be the most challenging to put on how have the pdc been able to get the green light to put q school on yeah you know again just what we see about testing and the challenges in the current situation we've got to do a lot of things um, you know, a lot of guidelines to follow, and we get permission to do certain events. So, well, all our events we get permission to do. Um, but it, you know, it, the guidelines that are constantly changing. You know, we're still awaiting um, what we're going to be doing with testing for Q School, which I know is difficult because people, players, want to know. But you know, until we're told exactly how we can do it, we've just got to keep the players informed as much as we can. So yeah, it is a challenge again. You know, obviously, then the European one, they've got their the, the different restrictions um they're a bit more advanced than the testing over there so they will probably be doing rapid testing um but until we get final confirmation um on what we've got to do we'll we'll just like say keep the players informed as much as we can and then send out the final players briefs hopefully next week and we've all got our fingers crossed that q school will be able to go ahead but is there a backup plan in case it can't happen in a few weeks time um I'm sure there will be. Um, it hasn't been discussed much as yet, uh, much as yet to be honest. But because you know, all the, all the signs are that we we will be able to proceed with Q School. But you know, I'm I'm sure Matt and Barry have something up their sleeves in in, in case you know at the, at the last minute the guidelines change to say that we can't do it. I'm sure the, those two guys there uh, will have something ready for us if uh, if we need to change it question we've had in from Warren Allsworth he says if a player is forced to withdraw from Q school for COVID related reasons be that a positive test or due to travel will they still be eligible for the challenge tour this year? That's something we're discussing at the moment with um, with the PDPA um, so you know once that once that's uh, an agreement has reached that we will inform everybody again of, of that uh, of that answer. And last one on Q School before we look further ahead. Luke Tucker says, would he'd like to know, uh, would the PDC ever consider the residency of a player and not the nationality when it comes to Q School and, and which one they can enter? Um, we, we have a rule in place for a residency of players, um, which is rule off the top of my head and hope I get this right, which is on the, on the PDC. PDC website is 7.6 so if a player has if a different nationality has resided in the country for more than five years they can then you know choose to play in that country's or, the, or that section of the of Q school but then they cannot go back to change their nationality again within a period of time so for example Anastasia if she wanted to play because she's lived in the UK for a long time she wanted to play UK Q school she could but then um, say for example she, she did got a card and did really well she would not be able. Well, she wouldn't be classed as Russian for um, for like World Cup selection or anything. Unfortunately, George Dobson has a, a question on the the Premier League, which of course has been delayed until Easter. With hope to get some fans back, will it be delayed as long as possible in an attempt to get fans back, or will it definitely start at Easter regardless? Um, again, uh, you know that's more uh, an answer for for Matt or Barry, but I would. You know, the other thing we've got to take in consideration for the Premier League is TV scheduling as well. 
you know, we do have TV contracts, um, and they can't just, you know, a lot of TV, obviously, especially the sports channels, can't just move things around because that's, that's much, there's that much sport going on. But yeah, we, you know, we, we, I think the plans are in place to, you know, keep it. Um, on hold for as long as possible uh, with all circumstances being taken into consideration. Excellent. Well, on, on the calendar, for obvious reasons, we know why it's, it's not out yet for 2021, but are you guys waiting for Q School to happen so you've got the full quota of tour card holders before you put anything out? From our last conversation regarding the calendar, um, we were hoping to announce uh, maybe the first two months and, you know, obviously all pending um, and change, you know, um, changes sort of like that can be made if they've needed. The first couple of months worth of, um, of events will hopefully be announced. And I say this again, hopefully, round about the Masters time. So back end of next week. Excellent. Well, a question away from the calendar. Captain Mike Yates has said, and I don't know if you've seen this, it's come up in the last few days, but given the call from one management company for yellow and red cards for gamesmanship. A, do you think the referees have been too hands off? And B, will the PDC and or the DRA act to cut down perceived gamesmanship? Yes, obviously gamesmanship um, has, has got a wide area and people's interpretation of gamesmanship. Um, we are sitting down um, with the referees and and the DRA um, as soon as possible in the, in the next two or three weeks, um, you know, obviously via Zoom, and we'll be looking into this um and see, you know, what we can do and what are the... We do have in place sanctions, which, again, some people may not be aware of. Um, but we just need to probably get it all together again and just maybe update them and just have a, a clear path of what referees need to do and when they need to do it. And one question that you've already seen, of course, from Martin Leake, who says to ask, do you have more <laughs> Costa points, him or Ted? Ted is Martin. Um, obviously, you know that's an internal thing, and tell him it'll be me because I, I believe at the minute I have um, eighty-eight thousand, and he's got eighty-four. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in front with that at the moment. And and Ted, Ted, you know, just if Ted is listening, you know, he's gone very quiet on the football side at the minute. I know my team's Newcastle, so I've got nothing to brag about. But you know, Ted is Ted is Liverpool, and when he's when they're doing well, he's very vocal. But he's been very quiet recently. <laughs> yeah, obvious reason for that. Um, and, and lastly, I've been staring at a Newcastle United badge for the last few minutes. But um, when we last had you on the, the show in July, you said you don't know what's going to last longer: COVID nineteen or the takeover of Newcastle United. Both are still here six months Both later. Still, yeah, which, so... one, which one do you think will finish first? The way things are going with my club, I would think probably COVID will have disappeared and the whole world will be back to normal before Newcastle gets sold. Graham, it's always a, a pleasure to get you on. I know it's a, a busy time for you guys at the moment, so I appreciate the time and wish you all the best for next week with the Masters getting underway and, and Q-School in, in a few weeks and for the rest of 2021. Yeah, thanks for having us on again, Alex, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you soon.